Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to all time tens, and the video is 10 astronomical events that will happen in your lifetime. Um, I've done videos like this before, but I don't know if it's in my I don't know, I don't know which ones, but I've done them ones similar to this, and they've always been really intriguing to see sort of what could possibly happen in the next 30, 40, 50 years, maybe longer. I mean, yeah, man, it's just intriguing to see what's going to happen in the world, basically. But yeah, I don't know if this is 100% accurate or what, but I just enjoy these videos, really. But yeah, if you want more reactions like this, just suggest them in the comments. And I mean, yeah, I'm just going to jump into this tutorial. I'm not even going to talk too much in the intro. Shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter, links in the description for those interested in following. And I mean, yeah, man, let's just, just jump into this one. 10 astronomical events that will happen in your lifetime. God, that was loud. Number 10. Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet was named after astronomer Edmund Halley, who calculated its period of orbit. It is the only known short period comet that is regularly visible to the naked eye from Earth. Regularly. It is seen from Earth every 75 to 76 years, and so, technically, some lucky humans will get to see it twice in their lifetime. The, the first Halley's Comet witnessed in the Space Age in 1986 saw several spacecraft approach its vicinity to establish its composition. High-powered telescopes also observed the comet as it swung Wait. by Earth. What is the difference between a comet and a meteor? Comet versus... A comet is a body of ice, rock, and dust that could be several miles in diameter and orbits the sun. Wait. Oh, so it's just oh, so it just sort of orbits like a planet. That's weird. I just want to see Hades' comet. Jeez, that is beautiful, bro. Next predicted, predicted next. Perihelion, 28th of July, 2061. It's crazy that they've got the exact day as well. I mean, obviously it probably wouldn't end up being then, but I just thought they'd have the year, but Jesus, man. I don't know comments are like that. This flyby provided the first observational data on the structure of a comet's nucleus, the mechanism of comet and tail formation. But for those of you who missed it in 1986, don't worry because it'll next appear in 2061. In the meantime, you can see its remnants every year. The Orionid meteor shower, which is spawned by Halley's fragments, occurs wow. annually in October. Number nine, near-Earth asteroid flyby. On April 13th, 2029, an asteroid called 99942 Apophis will pass between the moon and Earth. Following its discovery in 2004, Apophis, which is the size of three and a half football fields, gathered the immediate attention of scientists and the media. Initial calculations of its orbit by astronomers indicated a 2.7% possibility of an Earth impact during the close flyby. So, naturally, humanity feared for the end of the world. Fortunately, though, further analysis by NASA showed that Apophis will miss Earth by 31,300. I mean, man, I mean, I hope so, but I still can't trust NASA completely because, I mean, you hear about how every day there's hundreds of comet, hundreds of um, asteroids, or not hundreds, but loads of asteroids that we can't spot and they fly by nearby misses. Sometimes they'll can't, they impact and hit the Earth, and we wouldn't have predicted it. It's just one of those things, but I guess when they know one, when they know there's actually a meteor or an asteroid coming, they can predict it's going away. It's just the ones that they can't see, I assume. 100 kilometers. That's actually closer than some geostationary satellites, which orbit the Earth at a range of 36,000 kilometers, <coughs> but still far enough away that we don't need to fear for our lives. The flyby will be one for the record books, as it will be the closest flyby of an asteroid of its size in recorded history and it could be the last chance astronomers have to get an up-close look at Apophis for a very, very long time. Number eight, solar eclipse. Bro, I'd love to witness one of these. Is it, wait, this is when the sun gets completely blo blocked by the moon, isn't it? Bro, to experience this would be so cool. Like, midday when the sun's shining, it's not cloudy at all. Bro, that would be so sick, man. Okay, so we this are so slightly cool cheating with this one as solar eclipses can usually be seen somewhere on Earth each year, but 2027 has something special in store. Solar eclipses occur when the moon passes between the sun and the Earth, 
and it fully or partially blocks the sun. In a total eclipse, the disk of the sun is fully obscured by the moon, whereas in partial and annular eclipses, only part of the sun is obscured. Typically, the duration of a total eclipse is in the range of two to six minutes, but the longest solar eclipse to date lasted for seven minutes, 28 seconds. It happened around 743 BC and would have been visible across southern Africa. The next time a solar eclipse will have a duration of this length will be on the 16th of July, 2186, but most of us won't be around to see that. So instead, set yourself a reminder for Monday the 2nd of August, 2027, when the second longest solar eclipse of the century will occur. It will have a maximum duration of 6 minutes and 23 seconds. Do they know where it will happen? It will pass through the Straits of Gibraltar, oh, then yeah. across the North African coast, before dipping down to Yemen and Somalia. Number 7. Supernova On average, a supernova goes off twice a century in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way, so scientists believe the magnificent astronomical event is imminent. Supernovae are explosions that occur at the end of life for stars more massive than our Sun. The massive star explodes when it has used up all of its hydrogen fuel and its core collapses just before it explodes, ejecting most of its mass into space. They are triggered in two ways, either by the sudden reignition of nuclear fusion in a compact star or by the collapse of the core of a massive star. The last one was spotted three decades ago on February 23rd, 1987, nicknamed Supernova 1987A. It blazed with the power of 100 million suns for several months following its discovery and was one of the brightest exploding stars in more than 400 years. But when will the next supernova occur? Well, in 2013, astronomers from Ohio State University calculated that a supernova occurring within our galaxy will be visible from Earth sometime in the next 50 years. It would be visible to telescopes, but there's also a 20% chance that the supernova would be visible to the naked eye in the night sky. Oh my days. Number 6. Venus Occults Jupiter The last time Venus and Jupiter passed in front of or occulted one another was nearly 200 years ago, in January 1818. At this time in history, the Battle of Corrigan between the British East India Company and the Peshwa faction of the Maratha Confederacy was in full swing. Those mid-battle were probably not focusing on the night sky, and even if they were, only observers in a remote island of Japan would likely to see the occultation if they made a very special effort to look for it in the bright morning twilight. Skip ahead to the 21st century, and for the first time since 1818, on the 22nd of November 2065, Venus will pass directly before Jupiter and form into a single bright star, low down in the dawn skyline. Get your telescopes ready for the event, because it will be almost impossible to view with the naked eye, as it will be occurring during the daytime and in close proximity to the Sun. Number 5. Leonard Meteor Shower First noticed in 1833, this rare astronomical phenomenon occurs when Earth passes through the orbit of periodic comet Temple Tuttle. Leonard meteors are caused by tiny meteoroids that burn up in our planet's atmosphere as Earth passes close to the dust-strewn orbit of Temple Tuttle. Skywatchers have observed major Leonard meteor showers every 33 years or so from 1833, when the meteor shower was said to have produced a whopping 100,000 meteors an hour. Most years, Leonard storms are a minor event, boasting no more than 10 to 15 shooting stars per hour. But on very rare occasions, when this dense... Bro, see shooting stars is so crazy, man. There's like... I don't know, it's just like, I don't know how often, because sometimes you'll see things in the sky and think it is, but when you do see one, I see this video of someone who's streaming and you see the craziest shooting star in the background and it's just like, bro, the world is nuts, man. Like, just seeing that like, in person would be so sick. I think I've seen one, but I don't even know if I have. I think I've seen more than one. I don't fully know. I don't know if I'm just thinking I have or if I actually have seen one. Filament of dust plows directly into our planet. Meteor rates can soar to hundreds of thousands per hour or more. If you want to catch this spectacular sight, Temple Tuttle will next cause a major Leonard meteor shower in 2031. Number four, planetary alignment. The possibility of an alignment between all of the planets in the solar is system possible? is very rare. The closest that the eight planets will come to being aligned will occur on May 6, 2492. 
But unless we figure out how to bring cryogenically frozen corpses back to life, none of us will be alive to witness that astronomical event. On the bright side though, space scientists estimate that there will be a rare planetary alignment of Mars, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn and the Crescent Moon on September 8th, 2040. That's just 23 years away and is much more doable. Clustered well to the east of the Sun, the planets will stage a breathtaking show at 7.30pm, so mark your calendars now. Look, you couldn't see this with the naked eye, could you? But I guess with telescopes, you could see quite a lot. I don't know how much you can see with a telescope, actually. Like, I'm sort of thinking, you still can't really see anything, like... Um, Jupiter from telescope. Like, is this literally what you see? That's not a real picture. Is this actually what you can see? Bro, telescopes are mental, man. How you can make something so powerful where you can see that far away, like Jesus. Number three, Supermoon. Super moon. <laughs> In November 2016, stargazers worldwide enjoyed a rare event. A supermoon that was 14% bigger than its normal size. This was the closest the moon had been to Earth since January 26, 1948. If you missed out on catching a glimpse of the 2016 supermoon, there's an even better astronomical event on the horizon. The closest supermoon of the century will occur on December the 6th, 2052, and it will be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The term supermoon is typically defined as a full moon that coincides with the lunar orb's closest approach to Earth. In 2052, our celestial neighbour will be just around 140,000 kilometres away. But what possible impact could it have on us? Well, many studies over the years have been aimed at finding out any statistical connection between the moon, particularly the full moon, and human biology or behaviour. Reliable studies comparing the lunar phases to births, heart attacks, deaths, suicides, psychiatric hospital admissions and epileptic seizures, among other things, have time and time again found little or no connection. Number 2. Transit of Earth from Mars As of 2017, humans are not currently on any other planets, well, as far as we know. So if a transit of Earth were about to occur anywhere soon, we could not see it. The one noteworthy future exception, though, is Mars. For those of you unsure what we mean by transit of Earth from Mars, it essentially moving means when the Earth passes directly between the Sun moving humans from Earth to, to Mars, chief. and Mars. Obscure. It essentially means when the Earth passes directly between the Sun and Mars, obscuring a small part of the Sun's disk for an observer on the red planet. No one has ever seen a transit of Earth from Mars, but if NASA's plan to get humans living on Mars by the 2030s goes ahead, this could be possible for the next such transit, which will take place on November the 10th, 2084. This transit will be the first and only time that this phenomenon will occur in the 21st century, with the next one predicted for 2394, and by then we should definitely have colonised the planet. Number 1. The Birth of a Star Wait, what? Look up at the stars in 2022, because one of the night sky's most visible constellations Cygnus stars in 2022, because one of the night sky's most visible constellations Cygnus will be getting a new addition and everyone on Earth will be able to see it. Located about 1800 light years away, the star system KIC 9832227 in Cygnus has long been a focus of study. For years, the pair of glittery specks in this system have been circling around each other, moving closer and closer, and now astronomers believe they will soon merge in an explosive event known as a nova. It'll be a momentous occasion for scientists, as it's the first time they have ever been able to predict the birth of a new star, and this will allow them to observe the process as it unfolds. For us average folks, it's going to be pretty damn extraordinary too, being able to witness a once-in-a-lifetime astronomical event without the use of a telescope. Thanks for watching today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. But isn't it possible that it's already happened, but because the light years are so far away, we've just not seen it yet? Or is it is like the distance in terms of space distance not actually that much to like sort of see it thousands of years after, or hundreds of years after? I mean, I assume like, uh, what was I going to say? I assume 
maybe it's just going to happen and we're going to see it like minutes after maybe it's just not that far away but i don't know maybe not i don't know how sort of the time to distance sort of works when it comes to sort of being able to see things in the sky i guess it's not that far away but i don't know maybe it is can't wait for someone 100 years from now to get this on their recommended i wonder if youtube will be a thing in a hundred years time man that's a that's an interesting thought too a pandemic is someone watching this video in a hundred years time like jeez bro like with youtube it's crazy you don't know oh mate that's such a weird thought <coughs> happening in our lifetime global warming are you challenging me 10 astronomical events that i won't see because i like to be inside what of you to assume that most of us will survive till 2060 or further i hope so man let us pray pay let us pay respects to the extremely brave cameraman who filmed the space shots who's here after the great conjecture 2020 i don't even know what that is guy look up the sky to see a star being born clouds am i wearing this whole mask <laughs> bro clouds really be like that man but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this one again these videos are always really intriguing to see but um yeah let me know your thoughts on this and i mean yeah that's pretty much it but yeah until next time like subscribe peace